We're going to be talking mostly about custom post types this weekend. A better term for them is custom content types. When they first came out, everybody called them custom post types, and people quite quickly realized that they're not posts. So custom post type is a, a misnomer. Built into WordPress are two post types, pages and posts. And starting with, really starting with WordPress 2.8, you could make more, but it was really hard. With 3.0, they made it much, much easier to create them via code. And then quite quickly, people released plugins to make them. Um, we're going to go over a little of what they are and how to make them. And then I'll show you how I make them. What you see on the screen here is a custom post type for media items for a church. This is a large church. They have more media items than just Sunday morning sermons. They wanted to put up interviews with potential board members. They wanted to put up videos of the youth group event, etc. So this one is called Media Items, and I'm looking at a new media item here. Out of the box, it has the title and the content area, just like any other post type, pages, posts, whatever. Down below, this box is called a meta box. And just like every other meta box in WordPress, you can click the little arrow to shrink it. You could drag it around if you wanted to. Inside the meta box are custom fields. These relate to the old custom fields that WordPress has had forever, but custom content types allow you to make them look a lot better. The meta box is a convenient container for these custom fields, but it doesn't necessarily indicate anything about those fields. So if I took primary speaker and I stuck it in a different meta box, it wouldn't matter in the slightest with how you use that field out on the front end. Nobody cares. In this meta box, we have a bunch of text fields. Then we have a related materials option, which allows you to create many. We have an upload box. We have a checkbox. These field types are not necessarily related to custom content types inherently. You can make any kind of field you want. You can make a drop-down list, checkbox, radio buttons, whatever you want. All WordPress cares about is the value that comes from that field. So if it's a radio button, you, just, you get whatever's in there. If it's drop-down list, you get whatever's in there, just like with the text fields. Readers and contributors and revisers are not related to this content type. Over on the right, we have sermon series. This is a custom taxonomy. WordPress has been able to handle custom taxonomies for a long time. So a taxonomy is a way to describe your stuff. Out of the box, WordPress comes with a taxonomy called categories. You can make any other taxonomy you want. We made sermon series. Uh, if you were making a movies, custom content type, you could have um, a taxonomy called genre or era. You, you could have an era. So it would be in the classics era or it could be in the modern era or postmodern era or whatever. You can make custom taxonomies for anything. You can attach them to your regular posts, to your pages, whatever you want. So I'm going to go over for a sec. I'm going to show you the code involved in making a custom content type. And I'm going to reassure you now that you are not going to have to write all this code. So this guy made one for portfolios. So this is the code he wrote to make his portfolio. He created a function called portfolio register, and then he created his labels. There's the name, there's the singular name, what you want on your add new button, what you want on your add new item, 
uh, new item, view item, search items, all that stuff. You have to create all the labels for all the different parts. Um, imagine if for posts, if you're going to make a new post, there's all those buttons all over the place that say things like add new post, edit post, all those things. You have to create those labels. Um, and then there is a function down here called register post type, and it needs all these arguments. So you have to tell it where your labels are, uh, whether or not it's public, whether or not it's publicly queryable, so whether, like, whether it shows up with searches, uh, whether you want the user interface to show at all. Query variables, menu icon, whether or not you can rewrite. Um, capability type is post, whether it's hierarchical or menu position. So that just creates the thing. That doesn't do any meta boxes or taxonomies or anything like that. Uh, well, let's skip to step three. So he wants to add custom data fields. All right, he created a function to create all his fields. And then he runs that through admin in it and adds a meta box full of all this stuff. <coughs> Come down farther and he adds a bunch of code to update his post metas when he saves. Step four, he's got a whole bunch more code. So when I first got into this, I looked at all this code and I thought, oh, how tedious. I mean, it's not that complicated. You could, you could almost write a search and replace thing to make a new one every time and just say, I'm going to call this content type this other thing. Um, but it's so much code every time. I thought, surely there must be a better way. So I went looking for plugins, and I went through a whole bunch of different plugins, and I ended up finding uh, the easy custom post types from Pippin, and it was really great. 